Good morning, people of Good Shepherd. We are gathering these days in new ways, whether it's online, by email, by Zoom, or by phone calls, of course. I miss seeing all of you in person, as I'm sure you miss each other. But know that you are loved and prayed for, thought about, and cared for from a distance. I'm over 65, have a couple of well-managed health issues, but still stay at home, wishing I could go out and see people. These days, my husband Larry is our messenger into the world. Last night I was really hankering for a meal for something we didn't have ingredients for. And bless his heart, he went out wearing a mask and gloves and got them. Life is just so much more complicated these days. We now think about things in a different way. We see how blessed we are to do things we're not able to do. We used to be able to do, but now we can't. I'm sure you've canceled events, meetings, dinners, coffee conversations, all kinds of things with regret. But I also know that it is your love for the people involved that causes you to do that. Thank you. We also want to thank all the ministry team leaders, the volunteer callers, the staff callers, and other people who are getting in touch with the people in this church family. The first list was shared early in the week with some, and the rest went out yesterday. You should be getting a phone call or an email to check on you soon. We've asked our callers to check with everyone on their list at least every two weeks, but we know that some folks will do it more often because they just enjoy talking to people and because their schedules will allow it. Others who are working from home or homeschooling or going out to work to essential jobs will do it as they're able. But we hope that everyone knows that we are trying to, to keep in touch with you. Now, we are approaching the most important week of the Christian year, Holy Week. And normally we would all come to church multiple times, celebrate Palm Sunday with waving palms and shouts of Hosanna, and then move into the later days of the week where we remember all that happened to our Lord Jesus. On Monday, Thursday, we would gather around the table to receive Holy Communion. We would wash feet, celebrate First Communion with our young people, and then move into Good Friday. We would gather as we viewed the Stations of the Cross and prayed. Soulful music would fill our hearts and our ears. On Saturday, we would gather around a fire and light our candles from it as we processed into the church where the Easter celebration would begin. We would have just heard some stories of God's activity in saving people from the beginning of creation. We would be baptizing some folks into Christ and welcoming them into this particular body of Christ, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. On Easter morning, we would gather at sunrise and then again two more times to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord with great shouts of Alleluia. None of that is happening in the usual way this year, but it is happening in new ways. Our staff has been working on this for weeks. Members of the congregation are participating as well, and it will be a holy week to remember for sure. Please keep tuned in for each day's worship opportunity as we walk together down the road with Jesus from the entrance to Jerusalem on Sunday, to the supper, the cross, the waiting, and the glorious resurrection celebration on Easter Day. Sunday's gospel lesson is a triumphant entry into Jerusalem by Jesus. He comes in riding on a donkey, not on a majestic steed like a Roman king would do. He is greeted by crowds waving palm branches, laying down their cloaks on the ground as a carpet of welcome and then shouting with all their might, Save us! Which is what Hosanna means. What do you think the people expected that to do? Do you think they expected the Roman authorities to be frightened by their shouts and cheers? Do you think the Romans with their swords and guards were intimidated? Probably not. But it was what the people had and what they felt called to do. In 1989, in Leipzig, Germany, small groups of people gathered to pray. At first, the government took no notice of them, but as the crowds grew in size, the German officials began to see that they could not ignore 
what was going on. They were frightened. The pastor, whose churchyard was a gathering point, asked the people to bring candles with them. The people couldn't understand why. What good would lighted candles do against the army? Like the people who wave palms at Jesus' entrance, they could only count on the mercy and decency of other people. Candles or tree branches are no match for the powers of this world. Ah, but the powers of this world are no match for the powers of God. And God overruled the Romans who sentenced Jesus to death by raising him from the dead. God's power continues to work to overrule the forces of evil that would bring disaster to the world. We put our hope in God, not in military might, not in governments, but at God, at work, through our leaders, our in our communities, our sisters and brothers around the world. And hope in God is stronger than any other power which falls at the feet of God. In this time of fear, sickness, and death, remember that God is at work as well. We trust God's power and God's love above all else. Prepare your hearts to walk through this week's very different Holy Week, knowing that you do not walk alone, but you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, the Resurrected One. Please read the news in the online version of Friday Faith Prints and call the church office if you have questions about something you see. The staff is still at work and from our homes. For a few hours each day, a member of the office staff is on site, but we are always available by email, text, or phone. We love you. We pray for you. We look forward to being together in one place as soon as it's safe. May God give you the strength you need for the days ahead. We love you. Bye.